Hello, everyone. We are, uh, we've been waiting of uh, people flowing in to the webinar. And thank you so much uh, for, for joining us um, this uh, evening and early morning uh, in Taiwan and, and all those from joining uh, in Asia. Uh, I am uh, Jihye Kim, uh, assistant professor uh, at the School of Art, University of Arizona. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this three day long symposium, Photography in Taiwan, History and Practice. Uh, this is the second installment of our symposia series on Asian photography, uh, following the, the first one on Korean photography this February. Uh, the symposium is brought to you by Arizona Arts, uh, School of Art, uh, Center, of, Center for Creative Photography, University of Arizona, as an uh, ongoing series uh, of, of symposia on Asian photography. Uh, the symposium uh, is also sponsored by the Taiwan Academy in Los Angeles, an overseas branch of the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of uh, China as a part of its Spotlight Taiwan project, and we really appreciate uh, its support. Before we start uh, uh, today's program, I want to share uh, some acknowledgments. Should be working. Uh, we respectfully acknowledge that the University of Arizona is on the land and territories of indigenous people. Today, Arizona is home to 22 federally recognized tribes, with Tucson being home to the Old Odham and the Yaqui. I also uh, would like to uh, thank um, our uh, my colleagues at, at the Art History Program at the University of Arizona and my colleagues uh, at the School of Art and Center for Creative Photography who helped, uh, who helped me organize this wonderful event. Uh, the Scottish photographer John Thompson traveled to Taiwan. Well, he noted uh, the island as Formosa in his essay, uh, taking pictures of an Aboriginal people on the island in 1871. He included the photographs of Taiwan and its people in his 1898 book titled Through China with a Camera. Thompson's short stay in Taiwan was facilitated by European imperial advance to China as he, as he had established his own photography studio in Hong Kong two years before the trip. It is also notable that uh, this book, his book was published three years after uh, the island's colonization of Japan, uh, I think it should be working oh, of, of Japan uh, by Japan uh, from 1895 to 1945. So Japanese colonialism structured uh, photographic practices and culture in Taiwan. Uh, visualization of the indigenous people was a part of ethnographic and anthropological studies during the colonial period. So I'm sharing, well, one of our speakers endeavor uh, for a digital uh, archive uh, at the Lafayette College and his published book on the, the visual images and photographs and picture postcards of the indigenous tribes uh, during the Japanese colonial period in Taiwan. So Paul will uh, speak uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, and also the Han Chinese uh, opened studios in urban centers and went to Japan to uh, learn the technology. Uh, the Cold War, the Germany played a crucial role in the post-colonial Taiwanese society, impacting photographic practices in various ways. So this symposium aims to explore various ways in which photography has been structuring Taiwanese history and culture, uh, at the same time addressing very uh, diverse photographic practices and movements to the global audience. So we invited artists, scholars, photographers, and curators to join this collaborative, collaborative endeavor to uh, diversify and decolonize the discipline uh, of photography and its history. So panels are divided into topics, including uh, the history of photography magazines and major photography movements and exhibitions, colonialism, post-colonialism, gender issues, and national identity. I really hope you could join all the sessions for the uh, next two days. 
Uh, for some housekeeping notes, uh, you can choose the language uh, you'd like to hear. Yeah, you'd like to hear either Chinese uh, or English by clicking on the interpretation button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So, uh, and, and throughout the symposium, when you want to ask questions during the Q&A portion of the program, uh, please type your question uh, into the Q&A box. So now I'm delighted to introduce uh, Colleen Blakely, who is giving opening remarks tonight. Uh, Colleen Blakely currently serves as Associate Vice President for Strategic Initiatives of Arizona Art and uh, Director of the School of Art at the University of Arizona. He currently serves on the Board of Directors for the National Council of Arts Administrators as Treasurer, and until recently, he was the College Art Association, um, a, a member of the College Art Association as Secretary and Acting Treasurer. Colin is also a photographer whose works have been shown at PhotoFest Houston, the Society for Contemporary Photography, the Pingyao International Photography Festival, the Griffin Museum of Photography, the Photographic Center Northwest, and the Jan Beckman Gallery. He received his MFA degree in photography from the University of New Mexico. So please um, welcome, join, uh, welcome, <laughs> Colin. <laughs> Let me stop. Thank you, Jihei, for that introduction. Um, and welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm delighted to be here with you all um, this evening or this morning, depending on where you're signing in from. Um, as we come together to, to um, celebrate uh, this second symposium, as Jihei mentioned, um, focused on uh, photography in Taiwan, history and practice. I want to start by echoing Jihei's thanks for uh, the Taiwan Academy of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Los Angeles, as well as the Ministry of Culture in Taiwan. Uh, I also would like to extend a heartfelt thanks to Center for Creative Photography, um, all the staff who have helped bring this symposium to fruition, but in particular, Meg Jackson Fox, who, who has been, I think it's fair to say, an essential partner of Jihei's in the planning and the execution of this symposium. Between the strength overall of our art history program at the University of Arizona, as well as its dedicated focus in the history of photography as led by Dr. Kim, the amazing unmatched resources and work being done at the Center for Creative Photography, our number three ranked studio photography program, and the larger ecosystem of internationally recognized galleries and other photography related resources in the broader community, Tucson is an exciting locus of activity with respect to the medium of photography and its history. Um, thus, even though this symposium is virtual, I do hope that you will find that the University of Arizona and more broadly, uh, the city of Tucson is a fitting host for the symposium. And in addition to the photography infrastructure that I just mentioned in the university and more broadly in Tucson, the positioning of this symposium also ties directly to the broader vision of our arts infrastructure on campus. In response to a university strategic plan that foregrounds the arts as a vital component of the university identity, two years ago, the new division of Arizona Arts was created on campus. This division brings together into a single organizational structure, the arts academic units, of which the School of Art obviously is one, as well as the engaging and presenting units which include both the Center for Creative Photography and the University of Arizona Museum of Art. Doing so not only makes collaboration easier, it instills a, shared, a sense of shared purpose and vision in thinking about the impact the arts can have. Uh, I think this symposium serves as a perfect example of both the collaboration and the broader impact represented by Arizona Arts. Our telling of history is an ongoing work in progress. And at the base of that process is a fundamental question of what stories get told and by whom. Because the histories with which a society becomes familiar ultimately reflect the work of dominant voices within that society, it is incumbent upon us to interrogate and ultimately to expand on and add new perspectives to those histories. When Jihei approached me last fall, this was exactly what she intended to do. The idea she had was simple, yet it was wildly ambitious. 
develop and launch a series of symposia around Asian photography that would bring together voices from the East and the West in dialogue around that topic. I have to say I was immediately impressed by the ways in which Dr. Kim, only in her third year on the faculty, was already thinking broadly about the impact she wanted to have on her discipline. She is, of course, doing this through her scholarship, with one book under contract and another on the way. However, with these symposia, she's thinking not just in terms of an individual research agenda, but how to be a catalyst for a broader body of knowledge and the creation of communities around that body of knowledge. Uh, it's an endeavor I applaud, as I applaud all of you all's willing to contribute both to this community as well as to this, to this body of knowledge. Uh, the symposium, as, as you all I'm sure are aware, is the second installment, with the first being last month's symposium on Korean photography that many of you probably attended. Uh, my sincere hope is that this will not be the last symposium, and knowing what I do about uh, Dr. Kim's drive and determination, I suspect it will not. And so um, uh, I honor the work that all of you all are doing and um, wish you a, a fruitful and productive and inspiring symposium over the next several days. And I really look forward to um, participating uh, over, over the course of that symposium. Uh, thanks again, Jihei. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Colin. <laughs> yes, I, I really hope we could continue this uh, uh, endeavor with the Center for Creative Center for Creative Photography and Arizona Arts uh, School of Art uh, uh, to continue this series on Asian photography uh, as our collaborative endeavor to diversify the discipline. So uh, now I'm very honored uh, to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Shintian uh, Liao. Uh, Dr. Uh, Xintian Liao is a professor at the National Taiwan University of Arts. Dr. Liao served as the Director General of National Museum of History, Taiwan from 2018 to early this year. He holds uh, two doctoral degrees in sociology from the National Taiwan University and in art history from the Central England University. He is the recipient of numerous awards, including the Golden Bell Award of Radio Best Host of Art and Culture and the Taiwanese Culture Award. He is the author of a book titled Metamorphosis, an anthology of essays by Dr. Xin Tian Liao, the 14th General Director of National Museum of History Taiwan, and, and another book titled The Modern and Postmodern Art and Visual Culture Theories. So please welcome, uh, uh, please join me to welcome Dr. Uh, Xintian Liao. Dr. Liao, you could, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for inviting me. Hi, Kihi. <laughs> uh, we haven't seen each other for a long time, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, hello everyone. And uh, thank you in inviting me it's my pleasure and honor to be here especially under the impact of pandemic and uh, the russian war on ukraine and we are so fortunate to have uh, such a, a symposium uh, i feel so blessed i don't know if you believe in karma but uh, this meeting is exactly karma to me uh, i remember that uh, i met dr kihim in 2018 when I attended CAA KT International Program. And I still keep this one. I still keep this one. <laughs> uh, I attended Kim's uh, presentation and had uh, some talk with her afterwards because uh, we mentioned, and she mentioned about uh, Taiwanese photographer. And, uh, but we don't contact uh, with each other since then. I then become the general director of National Museum of History and uh, that I encountered lots of uh, photography in my museum's collection. And uh, National Museum of History is also part of an Institute of Ministry of Culture. So uh, just about last year, I remember September 4th, you emailed me and I received uh, uh, your email on the project conference and I, I forward it to Taiwan Academy as it is as an Institute of uh, uh, MOC, uh, a little bit help, but uh, I don't expect so much. 
I know that uh, Dr. Kim, he worked so hard and uh, my colleagues in Los Angeles are also uh, enthusiastic to respond to, he, to you. And uh, a lot of people make this happen. And uh, so congratulations to both sides. Uh, secondly, I'm not major in photography. I do research on Taiwanese painting and English painting before and after the World War II. Uh, however, I'm destined to research photography. Why? In 2013, I was invited by Mr. Lang Yuwen, uh, Lang Jinsan's youngest daughter. Uh, Lang Jinsan actually have uh, 15 kids and uh, two pass away. So he has 13 kids, okay? 13, you hear it. And to attend the conference uh, on Lang Jinsan's exhibition conference in China Gallery in Beijing, I found Lang's composite photography is a typical example of what I'm interested in modernization movement of Chinese art in Taiwan. And uh, the case of Lang expand my horizon of this topic and it will become a chapter of my next book, The Diaspor uh, Diasporic Aesthetics of Vividness of Qi and Rhythm, uh, that's supposed to be uh, uh, published in uh, next year or this year. Through this case and other, I argue that the definition of uh, ancient Chinese art is uh, actually modified under modernization. Uh, we look for new definition for old discourse, but we still utilize that ancient privilege to maintain the authenticity of discourse, a kind of uh, modern uh, uh, mystification. So I have two collections of Lang Jinsan and one on my office wall um, as Miss Miss Lang insisted that I need a mountain to rely on. In Chinese, we say the Kao San. So as you can see that I have uh, this uh, uh, piece of work on my wall and I have a setting here for you. Uh, I take him as my old friend, even though we don't see each other. He actually has taught at my university at the early time. So I can say that we are colleagues. To write something about him, to, uh, it seems uh, to take him for granted. And uh, for this speech, and uh, this speech is based on two papers, 2013, Style and Charisma, Master, uh, Celebrity and Gentleman, Lang Jin San Su in Taiwan, and 2016, The Exertion of Qi and Reason, Lang Jin San's uh, Composite Photography and the Aesthetic Dynamic. And uh, so I combined the two papers uh, together and share my, uh, how I find for you. And this purpose of this uh, speech is not only to celebrate his achievement, but to indicate the problematic at the time through the photographic uh, performance. And this is how I'm gonna do. I'm going to show you some images to create uh, your understanding as a background. And then, then I will uh, get to my uh, speech and see how much time I have. So as you can see the first one, this is uh, Lang Xinxan's typical uh, work, composite photography. And um, my journey of searching for the diasporic of rhythm and qi, this is why I, uh, I find out the Lang Jinsan case is so interesting and uh, so typical to my research topic. And uh, such kind of a topic uh, relates to uh, cultural politics, modernization, diaspora, Chinese modern painting, especially in Taiwan. And uh, some other Artists can be Zhang Daqian and Liu uh, Gao Xinjian and Zhao Wuji, uh, Zhu Dequin, and those were uh, examples of a diasporic uh, artists and they create uh, another kind of Chinese art uh, to me. So my ultimate goal is the diasporic aesthetics, uh, talking about how the vividness of qi and yun, qi yun sheng dong, uh, such kind of uh, ancient Chinese aesthetics uh, be modernized uh, in, in, in the modern society. And uh, the very poem I want to show you is that uh, uh, He Zihao uh, gave a preface in 1958, talking about uh, how Lang Jinsan's composite photography. And uh, uh, we can uh, summarize it it's a kind of so-called uh, 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 so uh, uh, graphene. And uh, the poem, uh, later on, I will explain to you what does it mean to me and what the subject. Do people remember him? Yes, some. 
and uh, people taking him as a kind of uh, uh, the, 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 the people, I mean, walking from the ancient time in the ancient China. And I encountered this sculpture 10 years ago about at some mountain somewhere. And uh, 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 he described a Lang Qingshan sculpture as kind of, as you can see, uh, uh, Ch ancient Chinese people. And, uh, but uh, the diasporic aesthetic in Taiwan's art history is uh, very particular because uh, uh, the controversy of Orthodox uh, national painting, Chinese sign painting in Taiwan in 1960s broke about a lot of uh, uh, informa uh, information and uh, problems. And uh, this is why I redacted, uh, relate uh, my research to it. And uh, overall, I'm going to explain uh, 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 present those ideas, but I'm going to uh, summarize it uh, uh, a bit. And okay, first of all, what is qi? Where can we find qi and reason in this painting? So as you can see that uh, this is uh, an ancient painting in uh, about the Tang Dynasty, Wen Fu Song Hong Tu, and the Mi Fu's uh, ink wash painting, and Nan Jin San's uh, composite photography, and uh, a Taiwanese, but a study in Japan in the colonial time, Go Xue Wu, and uh, a modern uh, printmaking artist, Li Xiqi, and uh, Liu Go Song's uh, modern abstract ink wash painting. Where can you find the qi? Okay, qi is a, um, a mystic stuff, isn't it? We can feel qi, but we can't figure out what qi is. And so the second thing I would like to, uh, 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 to talk about is the so-called uh, six principle, uh, because uh, six principle actually is the uh, principle of aesthetics that Lang Jin San used and utilized in his composite photography. And uh, the uh, six uh, principle are qi yun sheng dong, the highest and the down in order, uh, because uh, qi yun sheng dong is the highest, the vividness of qi, aura. And second one is the quality of line or the quality of brush. The third one, uh, the third grade is sketch the foundation of Western art. And the fourth one is coloring. And the fifth, structure and the position. And the last one, copying, mimicking, and imitating. And as a matter of fact, there is a kind of a hierarchy. The, the topest one, the highest one is the so-called uh, the vividness of qi and yun. And uh, any Chinese artists that through the thousand years, and they want to pursue this goal uh, through their artistic performance. Okay, so I'm going to give you a kind of a simple, uh, uh, a kind of a table to show you that the state of Chinese art is very much emphasized on the so-called elegance, uh, primitivism, zhuo, and simplicity, plainness, and the archaism and aura. And uh, there is also kind of a hierarchy from Shen, Miao, Neng, Jia, uh, kind of the uh, so-called uh, 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 kind of a, a label. And uh, this will relate to Chinese literature. And so, uh, first of all, uh, let me show you some uh, Lang Jin San's uh, uh, artwork through his whole time. And uh, uh, Dang Jin San uh, uh, is quite a long lived. He actually was uh, 104 years old, okay? 104 years old, yeah, you hear it. And uh, he actually spent half his life in, in Shanghai, Men in China, and about uh, 50, uh, 50 some, he immigrated to Taiwan. And uh, in 1934, his first composite photography, spring trees and majestic peaks uh, showed in British photo salon, and that became his uh, signature uh, of his uh, photographic art. And uh, back uh, in Taiwan, he established the, the very first and the largest uh, organization, which is called the uh, uh, Chinese Writers and Artists Association, and also uh, Chinese Photography Association. That was dominant uh, about 20, 30 years. And uh, that also aroused a kind of a controversy of the so-called his uh, dominant in the uh, 
uh, for photography so, uh, uh, community in Taiwan. And uh, because of this, there is a debate. I think uh, you guys are interested in uh, maybe uh, so-called uh, pictorialism versus uh, photorealism. And as a matter of fact, I want to remind you guys that in Taiwan, photography um, actually can be divided into two schools. And uh, the, realism, the realism at that time in the KMT uh, regime, uh, actually they are not uh, accepted as a kind of the major stream, but uh, this changed nowadays. And in 1958, I'm going to mention about, he published uh, uh, six principle, uh, Lang Qin San Ji Jin Zhou Fa, Lang Qin San's photomontage technique. And that is uh, uh, his uh, simple uh, uh, chronology. And also I wanted to put Lang Qin San into a kind of the, uh, the history at that time, because Lang Qin San, uh, 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 Bong, uh, he actually uh, have some kind of the uh, long lived and uh, under the uh, regime of Jiang Kai Shet and uh, 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 Jiang Jingguo. And uh, so he actually gone through uh, each stages of uh, after the Second World War, for example, the Cold War between uh, KMT, Republic of China, and the PRC. And also in the 1960s, uh, the White Terror period, and uh, in the 1970s, uh, the so-called uh, nativism movement in Taiwan. So as a matter of fact, uh, for me, Lang Jin San uh, is a mirror. I mean, reflecting upon the cultural uh, progress in Taiwan and of course uh, art. Okay, and uh, Lang Jin San, actually his work, I would like to locate him at the third stage in the 1950s, uh, what I'm calling, I call it modernization of traditional Chinese art. And also at that time, because of the uh, USA, uh, Korean War. So uh, uh, American, uh, America uh, uh, helped Taiwan to establish economically and culturally. And uh, in the 1971, Taiwan Republic of China was ousted uh, from the United Nation. And, uh, and so on and so forth. So I would like to emphasize that uh, Lang Jin San's influence uh, from his influences from 1950s to around the 1980 or 1990, okay? And uh, so his achievement, the controversy, and uh, first of all, I would like to show you uh, his work uh, according to what I have collected uh, in the early time to the, ma uh, to the later time. And uh, he was, uh, the first uh, uh, nude photographer and uh, uh, those work uh, is very salon-like and uh, as you can see, uh, uh, it's quite modern and sometimes radical at that time, I believe. And uh, also he took some uh, country scenes, some very beautiful, poetic, romantic, and uh, very much focused on collecting, you know, on the light, the sunshine and the reflections and uh, kind of very good one. And uh, he took some uh, ancient buildings and uh, for example, the Beijing and the Kunming. So obviously his uh, interest on photography is very, very wide, not only focused on, on uh, a, a, a single topic. And after move to Taiwan uh, in the 1950s, uh, gratefully that Dang Jin San uh, left a lot of uh, images on about Taiwan. This is the, uh, 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 the tai, Taipei, I believe, in the, the, the street scene, as you can see that uh, this is a kind of uh, people ride bicycles and we can sell uh, ox cart, something like that. And the people wear, uh, how do they wear and walk on the street? And uh, Lang Jin San uh, also very much interested in uh, photoing uh, Aboriginal peoples. And uh, so we can see some uh, different kind of, uh, a lot of images actually, I've seen a lot. I visit uh, Lang Yun's uh, house and uh, thousands of hundreds of thousands uh, uh, of photos. And uh, this is the uh, countryside of Taiwan and uh, people uh, raise pet, I mean birds and in the temple. And also as you can see such kind of uh, very interesting uh, Taiwanese uh, opera and uh, some kind of Cai Gao Chiao, okay. Uh, again, the composite photography are uh, not only on the uh, land, uh, landscape painting, but also on still life like this, very traditional 
one we call it uh Qin Wu Hua and still life but uh, very much to do with uh, Chinese painting and uh, as you can see except that uh, there is a kind of a particular uh, skill technique visual technique at the back of the bird okay and this is the one 1960s and then we compare his work with uh, ancient Chinese painting as you can see that uh, there is a kind of uh, intimacy between the two Okay, and uh, that is Zhang uh, Dachen. He took, uh, he has a, a special uh, uh, album for him, and uh, in the uh, 1961. So, if you compare the left uh, painting, you can see that uh, the gestures and the images are quite similar, but uh, with a modern way to uh, reinterpret it. Okay, and uh, again, this is a kind of a, a, a comparison. And uh, yeah, uh, composite photography is a very much a collect different kind of scene from the over the world, especially in China and in Taiwan, the mountains and waters and seas and trees, people and putting them together and create a unique image of uh, Chinese painting like uh, uh, photography. Okay, the birds, the grand, by so to hundred uh, grand. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, uh, after you got the whole images of this one, uh, I'm going to uh, re read my uh, papers for you and uh, see how it goes. Okay. Uh, the charismatic life of photography master, Lang Jin San. Okay. All right. I will stop here. All right. Uh, Lang Jin San, along with the master of various photography style, was a legacy in the history of Chinese and Taiwan photography, respectively, and together. He made a lot of firsts. The first the Chinese uh, photojournalist, the father of Asian photography, the first the Chinese photographer of artistic news shorts, founder of Chinese, uh, China's first art photography association, to name just a few. The Photographic Society of America named him one of the world's top 10 master photographer in 1980. His photographic subject over landscape, uh, portraits, still life, daily life, etc., modern and tradition. His style includes realism and romanticism. His cultural conception encompasses the Eastern and the Western. His style shows the uh, experimental and the creative side. He looks like a traditional a uh, man, but always try to break the rule. For me, he's small. So he's a small great man, I mean photographer, in terms of quality and quantity. Uh, he is representative of the traditional period of time of Chinese culture in Taiwan since in the 1950s. His achievements, particularly what he called composite photography or photomontage are extremely admired. Invented in 1934, composite photography is much earlier than Adobe Photoshop in 1988. <laughs> Though we know that uh, their processing and purposes uh, are different. After moving to Taiwan in 1949, at his age of 59, his Chinese styles and the influences of were pragmatic. Lang is a classic example of many Chinese artists who relocated to Taiwan after the Chinese Civil War in 1949. He possessed a rich Chinese cultural heritage, a distinctive traditional demeanor. Although he attempted various types of photography in his lifetimes and received praises as well as criticism, composite photography became his signature at, uh, art form. Lang's emphasized on the principle of vividness of qi and rhythm, or we say spirit, renaissance, or qi yun sheng dong, closely connected his work to Chinese uh, cultural tradition. Vividness of Qi and Rin is the highest guideline in Chinese, uh, in traditional Chinese painting and, uh, is uh, uh, and is a creative technique by which utilizing forms such as blank, smoky clouds and ink tinging can be arranged and practiced. Most of the people agree that Lang invented a unique style of photography in his photo montage of Chinese landscape painting. He encouraged technically to absorb Western civilization of science, making photography shooting an easier thing for all. And nevertheless, he also emphasized to incorporate Chinese motif in photographic art, both in scene taking and tone. I believe that Lang changed the way images were portrayed with crowds and the blank space serving practical and symbolic roles. 
it is a problem, but for me, it is a problem solving pattern, enabling to connect and related images together. Lang's photomontage highlighted the struggle among images transformation and the traditional aesthetic doctrines and the modernity in Chinese art history. This is a general characteristic of Chinese, uh, modern Chinese art movement in Taiwan and also in mainland China. Achievement and country. Wang Jinsan played the role of uh, leadership in Taiwan, uh, Taiwanese art and the cultural community. He actively uh, practiced in the domestic and international cultural activities after the war. His traditional literary style provided him and his work with an undeniable standing in Chinese art community. Regarding criticism toward Lang Jinsan's activity in Taiwan, and his creati uh, creative style, he was an insinuating effect. There was an insinuating effect on Lang's composite photographic art in terms of the controversy of pictorialism and the photorealism. The latter was a peripheral group at that time, but it became mainstream nowadays. Lang was always uh, persistent in his view of beauty in harmony. This is uh, uh, made, uh, this is a, uh, uh, also explain why he did not refute the numerous criticism posed against his works. Lang's activity in Taiwan showed that although he was considered a master, questions were continually raised about his artistic style. Han Baode, a Taiwanese aestheticist and scholar, praised his photographic achievement in an article, The Scientification of Chinese Painting, a look back on the art of Lang Jinsan, I quote, Lang's photographic, uh, photography was found on the theory of Chinese painting. It is scientific and it will forever remain the model of traditional painting. The modernization of his art in the most successful among all Chinese painting after the late Qin Dynasty, end quote. Lang passed away in Taiwan uh, on April 13, 1995 at the age of 104. On one hand, his rich life experience distinctive artistic style won admiration. On the other hand, harsh criticism entangled at the time because such unchanging poetic uh, uh, and, and romantic style. And, uh, okay, uh, on May 6, 1995, a negative article was written after uh, by Xiao Jiaqin uh, for the China Time uh, newspaper titled, Is Lang Jinsan a Master Photographer? Additionally, on October 13, another scholar, Guo Li Xin, uh, uh, teach at the uh, Shixin University now, also wrote an article entitled, How did Lang Jinsan become a master? How did he transit, uh, transmit Chinese culture? A century old ferryman. The two articles truthfully describe the con controversy and the problems with the photography in Taiwan after the World War II, such as the debate between pictor uh, pictorial photography and the photorealism. And uh, as early as the end of 1953, criticism remarks were heard such as, although beautiful, his art demonstrated no improvements. Art professor Gu Xianliang used cliche to describe Lang's style at his uh, photographic exhibition, highlighting the awkward inference in that Lang had others, uh, had on others. Lang chose not to respond to the criticism given to him. This may be because he believed that the beauty of harmony, he strictly followed the proverb, a perfect person is perfect because he does not see the bad side in others. Okay, believe, um, uh, believe it or not. And the uh, unfair situation, these two arguments and the disputes. When arguments and the disputes occur, the beauty that originally existed is source, end quote. Criticism against uh, Lang primarily involved how artistic uh, attainment, limited artistic creation, disproportionately high atten attention to Chinese painting, excessive control over photography groups, and the inferences of vocal ideas. Lang moved to Taiwan in 1949, a time when he, when the debate on orthodox Chinese painting occurred, a controversy of cultural politics. I believe that Lang 
conducted photography experience in attempt to solve the problem represented by this situation, which was how to transform and display ink watch painting by using image recording media and achieve the desired vividness from reason of spirit effect to maintain the essence of Chinese art and quote. The example showed that the controversy aesthetic meaning of vividness of qi and reason differs from that of the past. Dan's photomontage experiment changed the way images were portrayed and the experiment was performed to solve the problem of regarding what the dialectical relationship was amongst the artistic skills, aesthetic interpretation, and the image portrayal. Uh, seamless crafting of problem-solving stages. And uh, uh, let me show you this poem. OK, this poem. Uh, this poem is written by uh, by uh, He Zihao in 1958 and uh, Friend, a photographer of great ingenuity, sovereigns of poem on images, poetry in the form of picture, their vividness clear transmitted. Photomontage create poetic chapters as nature grabbed in the brow of trees. Imagination begets whimsical scenery, the inspiring views, uh, Magnificently show. And in Chinese, Lang Zi Jiang Xin, Se Yin Jiang Xin Gong, Qian Shou, Shi Ju Liu Yin Zhong, Hua Shi Cheng Ju Geng Sheng Se, Xu Xu Shen Tai Yi, Shen Neng Tong. But I think the most important one is the uh, so called uh, Yi Hua Jie Mu. Uh, Yi Hua Jie Mu is uh, uh, what I just show you. Uh, its translation probably can be said uh, uh, so called. Uh, uh, seamless grafting. Uh, I think seamless grafting is not uh, just a description about his uh, composite photography, but I took it as a kind of problem solving strategy for himself in terms of the uh, uh, putting uh, very different images together. And this subtitle is used by Lang to describe his technique and the style for composite photography, cutting and uh, uh, pasting images. The above question is Lang Jin San, the master photographer, argued whether composite image lacked the coherent effect displayed in ink wash painting. What Lang considered to be a contribution to the world was exactly what made Xiao Jiaqing uh, consider photomontage a failure. Both sides used similar words to describe the art, but their evaluation were utterly opposed. Therefore, the question of whether the compositing of Images used in Long's art creation can attend to kindness and beauty, Zhen San Mei, and win the approval of viewers is without consensus. To Lang, the difference between photomontage and uh, collage was that photomontage was an advanced image integration method. Lang was highly aware of the rigidity and the lack of unity created when new materials were pieced together. A knowledge that he had long acquired when he ran a business in advertisement uh, industry in Shanghai, Lang related as follows, uh, quote, although the cutting and pasting of various images produces eccentric and particular arts that draw people's attention, the traces of patchwork are already visible for a critic such imperfection is unacceptable, end quote. The photomontage technique, which uh, features numerous advantages of its own, removes its imperfection. The emanation of scenes between images was of utmost importance for Lang's art. The goal was to produce a composite image that seemed seamless and appeared to be part of the same uh, picture. Lang described them as image that uh, as images that were grabbed in the brows on a tree and being like a seamless heavenly robe, and quote, yi hua jie mu, tian yi wu feng. That is Chinese verb describing uh, everything is perfect. These descriptions also define the photomontage as shown in the passage as follows, and I, I, I quote, although photomontage are, com are composite images, uh, these images are still three, substituted by their creators through the use of artistic conceptions, as well as the creative craftsmanship. These images appear uh, completely nature without uh, 
uh, uh, defects and uh, are pretty to look at and are comparable to the real object in the picture. They are words apart from cut and paste arts and in, uh, arts and imply that the principles of Chinese painting can now be applied to pho photographs, end quote. Furthermore, Nang believed that the concept of photo montage conform with painter's creation by using random subjects found in nature uh, environments. In this respect, nature is a concept that does not mirror reality. Nang believed this to be what human visual perception was designed for. The integration, the uh, interaction between the humanistic view of nature and the nature view of the humanity enables visual arts to reproduce the uh, various aspects of nature. In this regard, uh, landscape images can be described as a reproduction of scenery that use a particular format similar to ancient Chinese art and art theory. They are controlled lands uh, landscapes and uh, are the artist's view of nature, but not nature as it is in reality. In 1958, Lan published the Lang Jin Science Photo Montage Making Technique. And uh, I find that as, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, we are so lucky uh, because I find uh, one original copy of Lang Jin Science publication in my uh, school library. Uh, 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 when I see some of his signature on the uh, uh, on the book, and uh, I'm I was so excited. I'm overwhelmed. And uh, uh, this book was translated into Chinese, English, French, and the Japanese, full of text and illustration. It clearly represented the photo montage making process. Based on the Southern Qi uh, dynasty, she has a classical uh, six principles of painting. Long use the technique of comparison, division, and application to demonstrate the view of photomontage. Lang often used one of the six principles of vividness of qi and reason and compared them to Chinese paintings to legitimize and uh, rationalize his photomontage techniques. He subsequently displayed his seamless and the nature artwork to show how they were related to typical Chinese landscape painting, as well as how they followed aesthetic principles of Chinese landscape painting. The immediate advantage of his method was that his art creation could be culturally validated and politically legitimated during discussions on Chinese aesthetics, making them a new cross-medium type of art within modern Chinese art. In a discussion of vividness of qi and reason, Dang indicated that, quote, Painting must be vivid and authentic. Painting without vividness fail to represent the images that they portray. The same logic applies to photography, end quote. In another discussion on the use of brushes, Lang stated that, quote, although the ink and ink brush are traditionally used for Chinese painting, they can be also be used for photography, end quote. Lang also added that painter's responsibility to authentically depict the images of objects is identical to what is done in photography. So Chinese painting and photomontage are less closely related. Therefore, to Lang, the six principle of Chinese painting used to govern Chinese landscape would certainly be used to govern Chinese style photography. Such conformity also enable him to promote positive and elegant images of Chinese style an effort that he had become committed to make uh, to making uh, from the start. Sorry. Uh, there are two uh, special techniques that uh, Lang Jin San uh, often use: positional management and uh, mimicking and copying from the model. Uh, Although he was similar to other Chinese painters who viewed the abstract concept of reason of spirit as the highest guiding principle, his definition of positional management was more complete. According to Lang, quote, photomontage is the art of combining the local regions and adding emotions to produce completed works of art. This concept is called positional management, end quote. To achieve the effect of seamless heavenly growth, uh, Kenny Wu Hong. Lang spent a tremendous amount of effort explaining how photomontage are made. Uh, 
He provide a uh, concept of landscape theory, such as angle, size, light situation, the art of composition, focus, visual real images, slopes and curves to manage areas where picture made and apply shadows to cover blanks area. In addition, uh, to produce vivid images, he used material that uh, generated images of mist, grass, waves, and the dispersed light reflection of tools. This highest guiding principle was to make the scenery engender a sense of depth and the vividness, as well as the color to blend harmonious. He described vividness of chi reason as, quote, not just a smoky cloud, but rather the true energy of the world, end quote. And admitted, and uh, he admitted that, quote, to capture something that is ten intangible is a truly challenging risk, end quote which revealed what the emphasis of photomontage technique was primarily to make uh, composite images appear flawless and completely nature. With the existing Chinese painting theory and related work being widely available as an example, collage-oriented photography works were able to achieve the height of Chinese uh, landscape painting. And uh, now generously, uh, uh, generous about uh, uh, sharing his artistic achievements and uh, uh, repeatedly showcase his uh, secrets to the uh, public. For example, spring tree and majestic pics like this, uh, 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 this work, actually he combined the two images together and in the middle of the two images, there are some mist. So make it as kind of the uh, whole and the complete scene. Okay, and uh, he shared with the world how to uh, how two photographic films were combined and processed to produce his work. Because of Lang's artistic philosophy and the methodology, what developed based on Chinese landscape painting theory, and because he incorporated the concept of vividness of qi and spirit into the aesthetic of photography by comparing itself with the approach made by art artists from the field of Chinese painting. His artwork were organized and simple to understand. In other words, how to graft the flowers on a tree, uh, like a seamless heavenly rope, were problems that he was uh, determined to resolve. He noted that uh, the way to perfect, to perfect methodology was through constant uh, tasting experiments. Now, who had received a substantial training in ink wash painting, and had acquired a considerable amount of knowledge in traditional Chinese painting, was able to apply these skills. He was deeply aware of the fact that reason of spirit was a concept that was difficult to master and thus emphasized that effort should be invested instead in creating deep, meaningful artworks by introducing images with hidden meanings and the well thought out photographic combination a sense of vividness could be shown to the audience. And the composition was the focus on Lang's photographic uh, research. All random objects in his surroundings he took for his name, and his art was able to display the so-called, uh, perhaps we can call it surreal idealism, and the nature-like quality because of his mastery of the bird's eye view perspective, which facilitated in, in uh, uh, a branding of images that create. Okay. And uh, another problem was whether the boundary were uh, where photographs were joined, something that Dan spent a lot of amount of time perfecting. I believe that uh, he tried to solve the problem uh, concerning the links of images and enabling new combined images to uh, be uniformly and vividly, vividly portrayed, echoing the idea of vividness of chi, uh, reason and spirit that Dan staunchly advocated. Therefore, the control of the space between images and the use of smoky cloud uh, progressions and uh, pranks were the focus of Lang's art creation. And his focus subsequently shifted to challenging the aesthetic of reason and spirit. He used a, of a theme commonly found in traditional Chinese painting, ensure that this photomontage would showcase a Chinese style. Uh, Lang's pine tree and white crane uh, features various overlap arrangements and that demonstrate the variations in structure with which images were combined the portrait. So I'm gonna show you uh, how this, uh, the final work, the composite photography uh, is completed.
uh, he actually, as you can see that the different kind of images put in uh, on this uh, uh, pictures. And if we, uh, uh, I actually have some information about that. He tried to collect a different kind of information and uh, make it uh, 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 move the tree to the right side or left side or upside down, things like that. And uh, all sort of work that we can't see, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, we see this kind of uh, complete work. Okay. Uh, then built an atmosphere in which space was created between a tree and a moose to create stories. New images were reproduced by dismantling the original structure of the images or its original text. However, if we take a closer uh, a look, Review, it revealed that although the spatial arrangements are detailed and, and rational, the images were not with, without flaws. For example, the minor cracks can be found, and these flaws include those in the head, hunt, head turning moose and the buck still awaiting his challenges. For example, this one. Okay, there is no other challenges. So Lang dedicated himself to the search of the technique that would enable him to still three substitute one thing for another in his landscape uh, photograph. And he was able to successfully find his technique, the use of crowds and space. As an alibi, vividness of chi and rhythm creates a sense of poeticism and integration, simultaneously fulfills the project of modernity in terms of uh, uh, Chinese aesthetics. Okay, here comes my uh, conclusion, chi and yong. And Yong is the uh, very uh, critical issue after, uh, in the Ming Guo period because uh, the Western uh, culture as an essence of the core body or Chinese culture still keep its core body is an issue in, uh, in modern China. So with the modernization influence in Chinese painting, their external features and actions and the internal features experience subsequent transformations. And uh, this implied that the belief, uh, the belief in maintaining the spirit of traditional Chinese painting was impractical and unlikely. The photomontage produced by Lang exhibits similar qualities. His artistic style and achievements were primarily viewed as an extension of literary or that he used Western technique to express the ideology of Chinese painting. I don't think so. And I don't think so much. The materials he used and uh, the artist's skill involved to, pr to produce photomontage different from those used in traditional Chinese painting. The vividness of qi and reason interpreted in Lang's photomontage because the functional purposes that can solve the inconsistent problems in qualities of images. It is not for the pur pure purpose of reviving Xie He's sex principle, but as an excuse, because of the modernism, qi yun had evolved other meaning that are different from his origin, which I find a lot of uh, several cases, for example, Liu Guosong and uh, English painter Fu uh, Juanfu, uh, they uh, use qi uh, yun uh, sheng dong and qi and rhythm, but uh, their uh, interpretation and the meaning is different. This issue concerning the history of Chinese modern art and uh, the uh, dependable contributions that Lang had made to the history of photography is worthy of discussion. The concept of vividness of qi and reason is similar to the struggle of modern Chinese society against the modern Western culture. It is a debate of culture essence and uh, a so-called ti and usage, yong, echoing the strategies of Chinese essences in Western usage. Oh, okay, oh, for or Chinese knowledge as a core Western knowledge for application, or vice versa. Han Baode stated that the photomontage solved the problem concerning the use of Western technique to express the ideology of Chinese painting. However, we believe that uh, in addition to this, photomontage resolved the cultural conflicts between the Oriental and the Occidental, as well as revealed the complex dialectic relationship between artistic skills and aesthetics. A general understanding of the essence and the usage of vividness of qi and yun views this concept as the primary aim of aesthetic, 
However, because of the various methodology implied by Lang to create photomontage, the meaning of vividness of qi and rhythm was defined. Okay, lastly, many people have experienced the following scenes on stage, seeing the use of snow and clouds to cover a boring or appalling environment to make the setting poetic, or witnessing the spraying of dry eyes to add charms to people's movements and uh, the arrangements of props. These elements soften the clash and the awkwardness between various objects and engender a sense of romance. The metamorphosis in aesthetic experience is created by this flowing and a substantial medium that is capable of changing the relationship between objects and images, which completely and thoroughly transform the overall pictures. Regarding long artistic achievements, his photomontages demonstrate or composite photography demonstrate the function of this medium that facilitates connecting among images and create a new text. Under the impact of modernization, Lang also showed that the interpretation and explanation of the traditional aesthetic concept of vividness of qi and reason may evolve through photography instead of traditional way of Chinese paint brushes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Dr. Liao. This is really a fascinating talk on Liang Jingxia. Like, uh, because uh, at the Center for Creative Photography, well, we don't have uh, Liang Jingxia's uh, photographs, but um, we do have um, Don Hong Ai's photographs, uh, Hong Ai Don's uh, photographs, who was greatly influenced by the style of Liang Jingxian's composite photographs. And he immigrated to the United States in the late 1970s. And then he saw those Liang Jingxian style prints right in front of the Macy's department store in Chinatown, San Francisco. That's how he got very famous with this very romanticized landscape uh, photographs, not of Taiwan, but like uh, of uh, Guilin in China. But uh, his style is very, very similar to Liang Jingxian and the Center for Creative Photography have several prints of uh, Don, Don's works. So, uh, thank you so much. And I think now we can move uh, to the next session with our- Can I, uh, can I say something, uh, Kihi? Yeah, <laughs> of yeah, course. Uh, as you can see that uh, uh, yeah. this is uh, one of my two collections of Lang Jinsan at proper time. Uh, uh, I'm thinking that uh, when I have some time to visit uh, your center, I would like to donate this one to your center at proper time. <laughs> what about that? Wow, what do you think, Meg? <laughs> Meg is a curator well, at the Center for uh, Photography. Before retirement, really I'm trying awesome. to get rid of all the stuff that I have, books and everything, all given out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, okay, so when, I, when I visit your center and uh, perhaps we can talk about it. Okay. okay. Thank you yeah, so much. It is made in 1942, by the way. Wow, wow, okay. wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Meg, can you can you move? Can we move to the next session? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Liao. That was brilliant, wonderful. Just so happy to be a part of it. So thank you so much. Um, Tal, welcome to our first special session, the National Center of Photography and Images. I'm Meg Jackson Fox, the Associate Curator of Academic and Public Programs at the Center for Creative Photography um, here in Tucson, Arizona. And it's my pleasure to introduce our session presentation by Chao Yi Tsai, entitled In Search of a Home for Photography, Introduction to the National Center of Photography and Images. Chao Yi Tsai is currently working as Chief Curator of Research and Development Division at the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts, and also acts as the convener at the preparatory office of the National Center of Photography and Images. She joined the curatorial staff of the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts in 1999 and worked as the chief curator of the exhibition division from 2009 to 2019, leading several projects at home and abroad and organizing various exhibitions, seminars, international artworks, competitions, etc. She was a board member of the International Committee for Exhibition Exchange of ACOM in 2002 to 2005 
In 2003, she was an exchange research scholar of the Smithsonian Institution USA and worked at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art for six months. From 2010 to 2017, she was the executive director and a board member of the Taiwan Fine Arts Foundation. She specializes in the curating of Asian contemporary art and modern contemporary art in Taiwan and has created numerous exhibitions, including Have You Eaten Yet? Asian Art Biennale and Viewpoints and Viewing Points, the Asian Art Biennale at the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts, Sensory Topology, Bodily Perception of Taiwan Contemporary Art, um, and Rolling Visual Art in Taiwan at the Seoul Museum of Art in Korea in 2013. Recent curatorial projects include the Pioneers of Taiwanese Artists from 1951 to 1960, 80 Years of Energy, Hai C. Chen's um, Retrospect and Prospect, and Intuition, Memory, Primitive Energy, Asun Wu's Retrospective. Chao Yitzai, thank you so much for joining us, and I will pass it over to you. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you, Dr. Jackson Fox, for the introduction. And uh, I also want to thank Ms. Uh, Dr. Chin for inviting me to, to this symposium and to share with you the story behind the National Center of Photography and Images. And allow me to share my screen now with you. So do you guys see the screen? Yes, yes, we okay. do see your screen. Okay. Okay. Um, NCPI is a very young cultural institution. It will celebrate its first birthday in less than two weeks on the 20th. Uh, the center currently operates out of two locations. Taipei is where the exhibition and educational program take place, and the Taichung office oversees research, publication, collection, and the, the coordination of the Taipei exhibitions. NCPI sits in the hub of the city, right across from the Taipei main station. It's easily accessible and situated in a neighborhood where there is a network of several major museums. This is also a place where we foster the development of photographic art in our country. The project that led to the establishment of NCPI is culturally significant, but it was no easy process. The photographic com community in Taiwan first became aware of the pressing need uh, for the preservation of aging photographic works scattered in household around the country and believe there was an immediate demand for cultural institutions specialized in photography. After years of petitioning by the community and other NGOs, in 2015, the mystery of culture finally set to stone the project set to stone the project that would later give birth to NCPI, which is named the National Photographic Asset Rescue and the Development of a Photographic Cultural Center project. The project focuses, focuses on investigation research collection, conservation, oral history, and the publication of photography in Taiwan. And the opening of NCTI, NCPI Taipei last year was considered a major milestone. The architecture that houses NCPI was designed in 1937 by Japanese architect Setsu Watanabe. It was home to the Taipei branch of an Osaka shipping company, Osaka Shosen Kaisha. 
after the World War II, it had become offices of the Taipei uh, of Taiwan Navigation Company and later the Taiwan Highway Bureau and the Directorate General of Highways, overseeing the country's transportation affairs for over 80 years. It was listed as a historical building in 2014 by the Taipei Cent City Government. Soon later, the advocation by the Ministry of Culture promoted the, the renovation of the building. The goal was to restore the building to its original 1930s appearance. And uh, yeah, from the slide, you can see since its construction in instruct since its construction in 1937, the building has been through three phases according to its user, namely Osaka Shosen Kaisha Taipei branch, the Taiwan, the Taiwan Navigation, uh, the Taiwan Navigation Company Limited, and the Highway Bureau from 1958 to 2014, it's here. And, and, in, um, and, the, and, and the later is the building was transferred to Ministry of Culture. Okay, then the renovation was completed in 2019, and the building has since been under the supervision of the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts. In April 2021, it was officially opened to the public as the new center for photography. The mission of NCPI is to serve as a professional institution of photography, to preserve the legacy and foster growth in photography and the image-based art in Taiwan. The organization has four main departments, collections, research, exhibition, and public programs. They support six major aspects of the institution's mission and goals, which are historic research, preservation of photographic, of photographic assets, development of photographic heritage, public education, delivery of contemporary artistic visions, and promote international exchange. NCPI aspires to construct the history of Taiwanese photography and the image-based art through extensive research and the process of expanding our collection. We also hope to introduce to the public current achievement in photographic art by ways of exhibition and innovate, innovative curatorial perspectives. Our goal is to make NCPI the hub of creative communities and an active platform for cultural and international exchange. Around 2016, the early pre preparatory stage of NCPI, the collections began as rescue mission to preserve early pho photographic prints and negatives. This might be artifacts from an older period of time, but we knew that we needed to maintain an open attitude to allow for works that represent varied cultural perspectives. With the goal of having our collection built around the context of photographic and image-based art in Taiwan, we now have over 12,000 items in our collections that range from historic images of Taiwan by 19th century Western explorers to recent contemporary photographic artwork. Uh, 
The NCPI collection is organized in three main categories. The first one is what we consider historic archives, which is valuable content for the reconstruction of culture and history of Taiwanese photography. This category consists of four subgroups. The first one, 19th century historic images. The second, works of photography studios from the Japanese colonial period. The third, old family albums. The fourth, photo equipment and artifacts. The second cat category of focuses on photographic works of different generations of Taiwanese artists, including photographers from Japanese colonial period to the post-war years, as well as photography groups and works that reflect the history of Taiwanese photography in the later half of the 20th century. Sorry. Works of the contemporary artists are also kept in, the, in this cat category. Uh, the third main category of, of the NCPI collection consists of photography best, con photography best contemporary artworks. These include the more avant-garde modernist pieces from the 1960s to the 80s, along with video installation and technology-infused technology work created after late 80s. Once the work in our collection are digitized, we would use the same, we would use them as resource to create online exhibitions. Currently, the, there are six online exhibitions available on the NCPI website. The first four I'm showing you are photo albums from the Japanese colonial period that are thematically varied. You can see the first two here and the, the, the other two of the Japanese colonial period that we are organized the online exhibition in our website. The other four here in the next two slides are curated to highlight specific type of works in our collections. So here is the four on that exhibition here for your reference. The NCPI galleries are located on the second and third floor of the center in Taipei. On the other hand, there are recurring exhibitions with a focus on Taiwanese photography. And on the other hand, we bring in curated bodies of work from abroad on a regular basis. The Taiwanese exhibition can concentrate on studies of our collections. An, impo an important effort made in the process of curating these exhibitions is the attempt to construct our own history of photography. With that in mind, they are also required to, to a certain degree, reflect on contemporary views and bring forward current topic and discussions. The international exhibition on the other hand, introduced cutting edge photo photographic works and artistic ideas from around the globe, from, the, from, from around the globe. Through exhibition project, we are able to initiate the exchange between local and the international photographic communities. We also actively collaborate with institutions worldwide 
to create opportunities for more people to recognize the spirit and the essence of Taiwanese culture through the abundance of photographic, photographic arts and activity taking place locally. The NCPI Taipei was officially open to the public last April. The first of two inaugural exhibition is called The Mirror Up to His Gaze, The Early History of Photography in Taiwan. This is a thematic show with the great majority of works selected from the NCPI collections. The other exhibition is A Hand of Dust, from the cosmic to the domestic, curated by the independent research and curator, Debbie Company, who I believe some of you may know. Hold the mirror up to his gaze is curated by Professor Lin Hongzhang. It displays over 500 photographies taken between 80, 60, 1869 and 1949, which seems ranging from Taiwanese culture to daily life as captured by photo studio during the Japanese colonial period and works of the first generation post-war Taiwanese photographers. The show inspects the idea of power relations through photography's technological history and the hist history of colonialism in Taiwan. Furthermore, through the lens of the modernization process, it looks at the history of Taiwanese photography prior to the mid 20th century. In short, this exhibition not only examines the relationship between the photographic industry and the history of world civilization, but it's also proposed to, to decentralize the methodology for the study, the history of photography in Taiwan. On the second floor galleries, is the opening international exhibition, A Hand of Dust, a photography of dust made in 1924 by Man Ray was the inspiration for the show, which explores the complex relation between photography and the art as the past century progressed. It also contemplates various metaphors of dust and how dust is represented throughout the history of photography and the visual art. Now I would like to uh, play a short video of the curator David Kempany himself introducing the show. A Hand of Dust ruminates primarily on the history of art of the West, nevertheless, it's thought on the role of photography, as well as the influence of images on modern society and culture are in line with topics taken serious by NCPI. By introducing the international exhibition to the local audience, we hope to bring in fresh perspectives when thinking about history, theories, the works of Taiwanese photography. That is how they characterize the interior and, and exterior landscape of our people and serve as references to our condition and ideas. Next, I would like to share with you some recent and future exhibitions coordinated by an NCPI. This exhibition represents the nature of our collections and the curatorial direction planned for the next couple of years. First is the emerging Taiwanese cultural landscape. The, exhib the exhibition showcases 350 photographic works scattered, uh, created in 
Taiwan between 1935 and 2010, with original print and the digital reproductions displayed side by side. Four sections, the place, the everyday, rituals, and the events representative, respectively depict the landscape, daily activities, customs, and the religions, and the imprint of time. The show is as much a the show is much about the images within the frames as it's about the course of Taiwan's history beyond them. Next is story of our scenery. The exhibition presents the distinctive visions of five Taiwanese artists as they stand facing mountains, forests, waters, and the coastlines of Taiwan. They draw upon either history, folklore, or extensive field invest investigations while reflecting on the landscape. Yet more importantly, their work remark on issues such as economic and social development, environmental concerns, and the transformation of ways of life. As their works take, take shape, they become individual, indiv individual narratives constructed from various viewpoints that are both crucial and introspective. Here I'm, here I'm showing you some image, images of the exhibition and also installation view. The next exhibition is the exhibition currently on display at NCPI. It's a gentle breeze, oral and inspiration in photography and the literature. A gentle breeze portrays women in photography from the Japanese colonial period to the 1960s in Taiwan. The show include, includes print, glass plates, film, mag magazine pages, and among the 300 plus items here, many are displayed for very first time. The work show us how photographers back in the day, capture the multitude of appearance of Taiwanese women. Not only do these pictures show us their outfit, hairdos, they also give us an idea of the daily lives, rec recreational activities, and other cultural aspects these women were engaged in during this, that time. Besides photography, the curator selected famous paintings from the same period. He also commissioned the contemporary writers to reinterpret certain images with new pieces of writing. Overall, the show tells us not only specific photographic angles and the gaze exercised by photographers over time, it reveals to us how Taiwanese women transformed through the changing times and how they broke through traditions in search of independence. Last but not least is, is the upcoming exhibition, Specularity, Reflexivity, Contemporary Images, Contemporary Image Arts after 1980s. It shows, this show look at the formation and changes of contemporary photo best art in Taiwan from the 1980s to this day. The notion of landscape 
is the starting point of this closer look into the practice, practices of Taiwanese photo artists. The curator believes that the landscape depicted in their works can be natural, cultural, social, even pertaining to the human body. As these are the channels through which the exhibition reimagines re re the or original narratives, narratives of the works of the artists on display. This exhibition is still in preparation and currently display on the PPT are some images of the exhibit works in the exhibition. I hope the introduction above gave you a proper picture of how we attend how we attend to develop and continue to develop our collections and exhibitions at NCPI. We truly hope that the funding of this institution may support and reinstate the importance of the ongoing effort in the preservation, research, collection, and exhibition of photography in Taiwan. We will continue to recover restore and value the, high, the hidden pho photographic treasures around the country and bring them to the audience here and abroad through a diverse range of publication and exhibitions. At last, we hope that by building a solid foundation for photography in Taiwan, we may continue to steadily explore possibility in the world of contemporary photographic arts. Finally, to wrap up my presentation, I would like to play you a short documentary that shows the, bir the birth of NCPI from beginning to end. The film is about four minutes long. Please enjoy. Nio 1994年第四届台北摄影节 那从2006年大家就不定期的聚会 于2014年,文化部决定修复位在台北市中心的元大阪商船株式会社台北之店 
国画部开始进行国家摄影博物馆专案评估计划以来，二零一七年由文化资产局进行建筑物硬体的修复。在这期间，国立台湾博物馆也进行了摄影史纲、摄影资源调查、摄影家口述影音记录等计划。之后，由国立台湾美术馆接手。推动过程中。因为民间及跨机构的努力，才能有如今的成果。从零到一的过程，其实有非常多人的推动。那也希望大家看到摄影中心的时候，也能够去了解一下那个背后推动的过程，然后对那些推动者跟贡献者致意。所以，我们一方面呢，我们要建构我们台湾哈的摄影史哈。那么第二个呢，也要从很多的摄影家的作品，以及摄影家当时用什么样的眼光啊，来看这个社会，调查、研究啊、推广以及传承啊，这会是未来这个摄影中心非常重要的一个工作。期望借由本馆的研究能量，能够深耕本土，接轨国际，呈现台湾摄影艺术的最佳风貌。期待未来有更多属于台湾的摄影作品陆续回到这个家。Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Xiao Yi. I really enjoyed that um, overview of your institution. And before we get started with um, a q and I want to invite everyone to submit their questions or their comments into the Q&A or the chat here um, at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, Xiao Yi, I would actually begin by you know, asking that you know, we have been talking a lot about collection and expanding our collection at the Center for Creative Photography. And, um, you know, doing this in the way that y'all have, how did you establish the categories and the subcategories that you did? Because, you know, the history of photography is so expansive. So to really narrow in um, is really complicated. So I'd be interested to hear how you did narrow in. Um, and the second question to that would be, you know, how do you think about the to kind of bring in um, Dr. Liao's uh, conversation as well. How do you begin to think about the Taiwanese photographers in the diaspora as well? Okay, so um, I answer first. Okay. Uh, I might need the, the, the help from the interpreter. And so I will speak Chinese. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 就是在这个一开始的时候, 我们有, uh, 委托了, 我们, 我们在一开始筹备这个计划的时候呢, 就开始委托了一个, uh, 专案的研究计划, 我们借助, uh, 摄影专家学者的力量呢, 来, 来做一个先期的台湾摄影史的一个研究那经有这样子研究我们去做一些分歧尤其是我们建立一些摄影家的名单尤其是早期的在早期的就是摄影中心最早的一件作品的时间是 大概是1860年代的一个由就由 呃，国外的摄影家所拍摄的一个作品。那我们比较最早期的一个台湾摄影家的作品，大概是在一九零零年之后，大概是一九一零年左右前后的这段时间的作品。那么早期的摄影家的这个呃。
的建立和这个作品的搜寻，对我们来说是一件非常呃重要，但是非常困难的工作。尤其是呃，当我们是从二零一五呃二零一六年二零一五年一六年才开始这个计划的时候。呃，其实很多的照片已经已经是处于呃消失或者是损坏，尤其是底片和一些玻璃板，其实都已经损坏的非常的严重。所以在这样的状况下，我们的我们的计划其实是开始于要要抢救这些损坏的或是即将消失的摄影作品出发。所以就是在我们的呃摄影中心的典藏一万两千多件的藏品里面呢，大概有百分之九十以上的作品，呃，都是比较早期的老照片。那么大概大约是呃，应该是百分之八十左右是比较早期的老照片。那大约百分之十呢，是我们百分之十五左右是我们呃。战战后以来的这些摄影摄影家的作品，那大概是百分之二到百分之三才是比较是当代艺术的作品，所以这这个大概是我们目前藏品的一个一个状况。那么当然我们的努力才刚刚开始，呃，我们呃大概差不多用了六年六七年七年左右的时间来做这个收藏。那但是这个收藏的工作是一项路遥知马力的工作，我们必须要持续的来做进行，而且必须持续要有，呃，政府和国家的经费来支援，我们才有办法把这个抢救摄影资产的这个工作来做好。Yes, that feels very familiar.、Um, I want to ask、uh, a question posed by Dr. Simph, who is the chief curator at the Center for Creative Photography, and she said, "I'm interested in the photo albums being collected. Are they being donated by families, and if not, where do they come from?" Like, 呃，日治时期就是大概是在一八九五年到一九四五年这段时间，大部分都是一九零零年以后的作品。呃，这些作品我们都是收，都是购藏来的，就是它不属不属于家人。有些是从这个呃日本方面，呃从日本那边购买来的。那么。呃，的确，我们有很多作品，大概是在，呃，部分的，就是呃，写真馆的作品，还有就是在这个呃战后时期的作品，呃，的确有很多是来自于家属的捐赠。那这个部分，我们也非常感谢家属们的大爱，能够让我们的国家典藏能够丰富起来。Well, and I'll I'll actually add to Dr. Simp's question because、um, I was reading online for your institution that you had a call for photographic assets、uh, in order to build a visual memory chest, which I thought was just so lovely. So I'm I'm curious about what kind of photograph assets, in addition to maybe these、um, photo albums that that you're interested in from、um, people who might have that material. And maybe in in addition, how successful it is as well. How many do you have? Quite a bit of submission. Um, 我们的资产都是半纸比较是古老的照片，所以就是也许大概是在二次世界大战以前的照片，我们都把它视为是一种摄影的资产。那所谓的征集。呃，那就是包含非常呃广大的部分，就是从就是十八呃十九世纪末期以来到现在到现当代的作品，都是我们摄影呃收藏征集的对象。
Okay, wonderful. And we have another question here from Wayne Liu. In addition to pictures, will there, will, will there be a plan to document and record Taiwan photography history? Uh, this uh 来建构我们自己的摄影历史。Jihei, should I wait until the... We have, uh, we have a question from Mia on the chat box. Um, Mia, would you mind uh, just uh, unmute yourself and just directly address your question in Chinese to uh, Chao Yi? Sure, sure. Yes, that would be much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Can emerge from the darkness. Uh, okay. All right. I, um, thank you, Chao Yi. That's wonderful. And thank you for this. Uh, oh, in Chinese, sorry. Yes, 非常感谢有这个机会,谢谢您这么慷慨的向我们介绍这个中心,现在这个国家摄影文化中心,对不对?对对对,非常兴奋有这个,因为我前面去台湾的时候,几年前去台湾去拜访 郎俊山的郎玉文的那些<笑> 中心有没有会系统的把那些比较重要的这些协会还有机构关于摄影的协会还有机构的这些资料委集一下非常的多而且早期的这些学会的这些档案啊文献啊还有这个照片的作品也非常的多所以这个的确是我们呃的确是我们要系统化的去处理但是系统化的处理需要非常巨大的经费的资源所以这个是我们必须要持续去努力和争
比较是现当代，就是一九八零年代以后的这些呃艺术类型呃摄影的一个收藏。那你说我们的重点在哪里？呃，应该是说。只要属于摄影历史的重，呃，只要是属于摄影历史的典藏，都是我们的重点。那的确是我们现在在已经呃投注了五年的时间在老照片之后呢，现在或许我们的重点会稍微偏移到开始呃收藏战后以来，二次大战战后以来的这些比较重要的摄影家的作品。嗯嗯嗯。嗯还是从材料的这种易损的这种角度啊、呃、出发，抢救型的这种出发，可能会会考量会比较多一点，对不对？对，如果我们我们知道了有一批呃底片，或是有一批照片即将要被丢掉，或是即将损坏了，那当然我们就是必须要赶紧的去把它收进来，因为、嗯、呃，因为就是尤其是摄影家的这个。第二代、第三代，他们可能对摄影也没有兴趣。然后，这个爸爸或是爷爷留下来这些档案或是文献，如果就是因为他们没有兴趣，就把它就把它就是一箱一箱的就把它丢掉了。嗯，那真的是一件非常非常可惜，而且是对于文化保存非常不利的一个状况。所以，我们如果知道有这样一个情形，我们绝对是第一时间要去要去处理，要去抢救，把它收进来，这样子。嗯，真的非常的感谢您，还有中心做这样子的工作。<笑>谢谢。我 ，I yeah I I have a question. Uh. Well,、uh, well, I really, really love to visit the museum、uh, whenever it's possible. Well, we are all exhausted of the COVID impact for international travel, and、um, well, I was in,、uh, I lived in Taipei for a,、uh, one one and a half a year, and even、uh, I think it was、uh, almost ten years ago, almost. And even the even at the time, I also heard that the about the plan there will be a photog national museum exclusively devoted to photography. And I was very, very excited、uh, to hear the news last year. The museum was finally open、uh, to the public, and and、uh, you also mentioned about like、uh, international gallery, like the gallery where、uh, the images and works of art、uh, from、uh, created by、uh, foreign creators or international creators, and also international works of art. I wonder、uh, NCPI has、uh, a plan to collaborate with other. Uh, Asian、uh, photography institution based on specific themes like Japanese colonialism, or、uh, well, Xin Tianliao, Dr. Xin Tianliao mentioned about diaspora、uh, at the beginning of his talk, and also even the presence of、uh, Taiwanese diaspora and their photographic practices in the United States. I think that it's it's really important for us to、uh, pay attention to those practices as well. So, like, like the two question, like one is about like the the collaboration with other Asian institution, and the other is about the the, the diasporic communities、uh, in the United States because we are now in the United States. Thank you so much. Okay, 我先回答，就是我们对于离散的主题的确是非常有兴趣，因为离散这个议题，其实我们有。其实台湾其实是一个多元文化组成的，有多元文化组成的一个文化的一个状态。我们有外部离散，有内部离散，有有各种的这样子的离散的议题。所以其实呃，我们的确对这个主题非常的有兴趣。如果这个呃，如果金教授有相关的一个想法，或者说有相关的展览呃。讨论这个议题，我们非常期待能够这个展览能够把介绍给我们。然后，呃，至于要跟呃，就其实我们原来的计划，我们原来的计划是希望就是，呃，我们摄影中心有二楼和三楼的展览室，就是我们原来期待是一个国内展，一个国际展。
的一个方式来推动我们的展览的这个，来服务我们的观众这样子。那但是这个 COVID-19 就是把所有事情都打乱了。我们的我们的开幕，我们是在去年的四月二十号，呃，对正式对外开开放这样子。然后一个月之后呢，就是。我们就台湾就迎来一个非常呃比较严重的一个疫情的扩散的一个状况，所以其实呃在这一年里面呢，我们有两个国际展，因为因为这个 COVID-19 的原因，我们没有办法，我们就是延后或是取消举办。好，那其中一个的确是我们是要跟日本的一个美术馆合作的一个展览，所以其实呃。如果相对来说，呃，我们我们希望合作的一个单位，可能优先优先会考虑这个亚洲地区的美术馆，然后呃，当然也我们也目前也在跟呃欧欧洲以及美国方面还没有开始哈，就是我们有跟欧洲这边的一些美术馆有开始讨论这个合作的事宜，那当然我们也跟。呃，亚洲地区的几个美术馆也正在讨论这个未来的展览交流的一个计划。那目前我们还有一个展览是跟立陶宛的呃美术馆有一个展览的交换的计划，所以这个都是目前我们呃正在进行的一些国际交流的一个规划。Thank, thank, thank you so much. I mean,、um, well, I have.、Uh, well, my first question was a bit stupid question, <laughs> but、uh, but I want to ask、uh, the name of the museum, like the the National Center of Photography and Images, but in in Chinese it's Guo Jia Xiaoying Wan Zhongxian. So、um, for me, like it translate like like、uh, the The National Center of Photographic Culture, rather than photography and images, is I mean even for 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 both languages, like the the reason, like I think there might have been a lot of discussion. What would be the name for this 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 brand new institution, both in Chinese and in English? So this is a bit stupid question, but I'm just curious. <laughs> 呃，金教授真的非常的敏锐，<笑>这个问题的确是呃很多人都会这样子问的一个问题。那的确是当初呢，呃，当初的确这个是以摄影艺术为呃标的的一个中心，但是我们的确是在我们呃去翻去寻找一个适当的英文的机构名称的时候呢。我们的确是考虑到，因为摄影，尤其是啊，像现在已经呃都没有底片，也没有相纸了，对不对？所以就是呃，所以其实摄影文化正在剧烈的转变当中。那我们面向未来，那摄影的发展，它必须要走，它必须走向一个我们不知道它会如何发展，因为它它跟着，它的确是跟着整个。科技的进程有不同的一个呃内容和形态的一个展现，所以在这样一个考虑之下，我们在英文机构的命名方面，我们特别加入了 image 这个字，呃，来展现我们既要处理的呃是以往的从十十九世纪以来的摄影的文化，同时我们也。要去处理的就是在二十世纪以后，摄影艺术的发展必须要面向未来的一个呃充满可能性的一个面向。那但是中文的部分的确是因为摄影本身它可以有比较多元而且比较宽广的一个解释，所以呃，然后一个机构名称太长呢，其实也不容易。做记忆，所以我们后来还是决定以摄国家摄影文化中心为中文的命名。谢谢金教授的问题
Thank you so much. Well, if I believe that might be our, oh, we have oh, more. Oh, Joseph Just has a question. Yes, please. If you want to unmute. I'm unmuted, okay. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I just want to, I just want to comment. It's not a question so much, but thank the center for so much of its attention to the vernacular photography. Um, this is what's going to be lost. And this is what's going to be actually the most interesting part of the photographic record. But I'm, I'm particularly thinking of the Japanese period. Um, and the more they can save and find like family albums from the colonial period, um, any sort of commercial photography that captured sort of class and colonial distinctions, this will be extremely valuable, not just for Taiwan, but also for the history of colonial photography, because Taiwan is very unusual in that its colonial photography came very late in the colonial period, um, you know, merging onto the you know, modern 20th century. So the more they can do there, the better. And I applaud what they're doing already. And I really, like all of you, look forward to visiting as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. I want to give just a moment in case anyone else. I think that might be a nice note to end on. Thank you, Chai Yutsai. Thank you, um, Dr. Liao, for a wonderful opening to the symposium. We are delighted to have the two of you um, in conversation here and looking forward to all of the other participants as the symposium continues tomorrow um, at 5 p.m. Arizona time and 8 a.m. in Taipei. Um, Jihei, did you have anything else that you'd like to add before we close? Well, I'm very pleased to have this wonderful opening of the three day long symposium. And I also hope uh, I could we could see you uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow for wonderful uh, talks by scholars and curators. Thank you so much. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. <laughs>